Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and in this Cinema 4D tutorial, we're going to be looking at the uh, new and improved polygon reduction tool for Cinema 4D R19. So in my scene uh, at the moment, I've got a head model that you can find in the content browser, and I'm going to put that under a uh, polygon reduction tool. Now the first change you're going to notice is that the polygon reduction tool used to be a deformer, so you'd find it in here, uh, here even, but it's now a generator. So instead of making a deformer a child of the object that you're reducing the polygons on, you actually put the object inside the generator now. So you can find that here. So we'll just put that in our scene and we'll put our head inside our polygon reduction. Now you'll see down the bottom here that it's actually having to calculate slightly. So if I turn this off and then turn this back on again, it's having to think because it's having to cache the points and you'll see that um, the mesh has been triangulated. So if I actually se select the polygon reduction tool, we'll go through some of this uh, stuff here. Now here we've got the polygon re uh, reduction strength. So if I take this back to zero, this is basically the same as this, but it's been triangulated. So I'll turn it back on again. It's having a good old think. And obviously as I increase the strength, the, uh, the more polygons are gonna be polygons even, are going to be reduced. So I'm at, let's take it up to about 90% and take uh, change our display mode to uh, ground shading. So we're still getting a pretty good result there, but we've managed to take um, the polygon amount by 90%. I'm just going to turn off the grid so it's not in our way as well. So we're still getting a pretty accurate representation of our human head and reduce those polys down, which is... Uh, pretty good so we can change my display back so that's one way that we can actually re reduce our polys with the uh, strength slider uh, the other way you can actually say well I want a try count of I don't know 5,000 tries so or 500 you can see that's really low that's at 99% now so let's say 1,500 uh, probably even more than that let's go 3,000 so you can, you can do it by triangle count, you can do it by vertex count, and you can do it by remaining edges as well. So you can put values, values in all of these fields, and uh, so you can be very specific on you know how many tries you want in the scene, or use this slider. Um, one thing that you'll notice is that if I change the display and actually just use our slider again, that even though our polygons are being reduced, our UVs are being kept intact. So you can see that, um, you know, where where the texture is for his eyebrow here, uh, that location is not changing when we reduce our polygons, which is uh, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant, that. Um, so our, our UVs are maintained. Uh, that's also true for vertex maps as well. So... Let's create a vertex map, I suppose. If I select my head and then go to uh, it's, uh, point mode and then go into select. In fact, yeah, let's go to our rectangle selection tool. Make sure we've got tolerance selection on and only select visible elements off. And uh, in fact, I'll go into my front view and make a selection like this. In fact, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make a selection and I'm going to go to select, set vertex weight, and we'll say that this is 100%. Okay. So we've got one side of our mesh um, at 100% weight and, uh, and the other side at zero. And that is, so let's turn off the polygon reduction tool. So that's, that's what we're getting on our orig original mesh. Uh, and if we turn on our polygon reduction tool, you can see that it's maintained that um, selection there. So the same is also true for uh, selections as well. So if I um, make a selection on the original head, um, let's go back to this selection tool, go to poly mode, and I'm just going to I'm just going to select a stripe across him like this. That'll do. And then go to select and say uh, set selection. We get a polygon selection on the head there. And that is um, maintained 
uh, in the poly reduction and we can actually see that if we select our polygon reduction uh, right click and say current state to object and we get this polygon reduction here and go uh, just drag this out we don't need this but even though this is a reduced version of the model when we select our selection from that we can see that it's tried to maintain it even though the polygon count is different so that's absolutely fantastic let's get rid of that head for now okay so the next thing on our list of uh, stuff to look at we've looked at um, the strength and the vertex count and it um, you know preserving selection sets and all that kind of thing we've got a uh, preserve 3d boundaries so I'm just going to turn my uh, head off for a moment and I've got this uh, already set up it's just a disk already in a already in a uh, polygon uh, uh, reduction tool so let's uh, get our display back to the lines so the preserve 3D boundaries, what does that actually mean? Well, 3D boundaries are defined as uh, being the open edges of a model or edges that belong to only a single poly. So with a model like our head a moment ago, this option is going to have no effect because it is a closed object. But with something that has open edges, like the edge of this uh, disc here, uh, it does have an effect. So let's have a look. We're going to turn on the polygon reduction tool and reduce our polys by however much but you can see this preserve 3d boundaries is already ticked on and it is by default so as you notice we, as we change the polygon count the actual boundaries of this object all the way around the edge don't change they're preserved so the count never changes at the edge now if this was checked off and we uh reduced our polygons you can see that the boundary edge is now being eaten away at and actually affected um so you may not care about the boundary edge or you may care about the boundary edge and want to maintain it and that's one way of doing it it's also important to note that the um, the effect that this has so when you've got this checked on the boundary reduction angle actually has an effect so at low, lower values it means the boundary is better preserved and at higher values it will cause more reduction of the boundary so if you put this up to say 90 percent with it check, checked on and then affect this angle here you can see that the higher value I go, the more that the boundary edge is actually affected. So I'm going to drop that back down to one, which is its default setting, and I'm going to rehide this. Okay, so that's covered that. Uh, the next thing that we want to look at is uh, the UV boundaries. So I've got a model of a female here, and you can see that the mesh is quite dense. And uh, Let's have a look at the polygon reduction. So I'm just going to turn that on and it's um, calculating. So it's put all of the polys of the model in in the cache. And I'm going to reduce this by, I don't know, let's say, yeah, 80%, something like that. So to show this, I'm actually going to change this model to a edit poly by current state to object. But I just, before we do that, I just want to go through what's actually happening when you turn this preserve UV boundaries on. Now, if we look at the mesh now, it's pretty even keel all over. Um, but if I check this on, you'll notice that there's a change in the mesh. So it'll have to calculate again. But now there's some fundamental differences. If you look under the neck, it looks like we've got this cut going around. And that is where the UV boundary is. And if you look at the arm, we've got another one here, under here, and also um, we've got a seam going around uh, sort of legs at the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna check this off uh, the preserve UV boundaries and I might even make the um, the reduction a little bit more extreme actually let's take it to 90% and I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna say current state to object and we can take it out of its null there and get rid of that and we'll just call this um, we'll call this preserve UV off and uh, let's unselect her and then I'm going to make another copy of this but with it turned on so let's turn it on let it calculate oh, we'll hide that as well while we're at it so it's calculating away and um, so that's now turned on and I'm going to do the same thing, current state to object. And I'm going to take this out of there, get rid of that. 
and we're going to call this preserve UV on. Okay. And uh, I think I'm just going to turn this off for now. So we've got, got both models there, uh, one on top of the other. In fact, I'm going to drag UV on to the right. And we're going to go to the uh, UV view, and then we can actually look at our UVs and see how it's preserved the edges of our UVs. So let's just go to that view. And um, I'm going to go to preserve UV off. And as you can see in this UV window, the edges of the UVs have been eaten away at the edges. And it might not be something you care about. It might um, not be a problem for you, but uh, with the texture that's uh, maybe not skin, maybe it's something with a lot of detail um, and it's, uh, its UV edges are important, you might want to preserve them. So that's with it off and let's have a look at the model with it on. So you can see that the borders of the UV has been preserved beautifully there. And as you can see here, and it's just what's inside them that's uh, been whittled down, if you like. So it's, uh, it's done a pretty good job of preserving them there. And that's with it off. That's with it on. That's with it off. Okay. So all in all, that's pretty much what the, um, what the uh, new polygon reduction tool does. Um, it's a lot more powerful than the older one. And the fact that it preserves your UVs is absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, so if you've got something that's really heavy, like a scanned model, and uh, you want to reduce its polygons, this is something that can really help you out, and all the while retaining its UVs, which is absolutely brilliant. There's also another use for this. You can create level of detail models. That's something I'm going to be covering in my next tutorial, which will be about the new uh, level of detail generator. And you can actually uh, make your levels using this tool, and then we can drop them into the level of detail generator. So that's uh, that'll be my next tutorial. Anyway, guys, as always, uh, check out the website at digitalmeet.uk there you can uh, see all the tutorials and uh, you can even vote for up upcoming ones there uh, don't forget to check out the digital meet club at c4d cafe and uh, i'll be putting links to the my social media in the description so you can follow me on facebook twitter and the like and uh, if you'd like to support digital meet there'll be a link for my patreon uh, on screen after the tutorial see you next time guys bye